So our next assignment for digital art is a spot illustration assignment. And it relates to a lot of the different uh, digital art careers out there, but it's also one of the most prominent freelance commercial digital art careers that's available. So I'm going to go to assignments to get information. Scroll down to past the midterm to our spot illustration assignment. We can download it. And we get a one page description. Now illustration comes from the the word illuminate. And before we had uh, printing presses and our images were mass produced, an illustration would be called an illumination. If it was a hand painted uh, image to go along with a text, let's say in a medieval Bible, then it's called an illumination. But now that once the printing press was invented in the 15th century, and once that image could be mass produced, it was called an illustration. But they share the same word root, which is to shed light on something. So an illustration sheds light on other content. This other content can be a story, like a children's book illustration. It could be a brand. So if you wanted to make like a skateboard graphic and you want to make the skateboard graphic for Santa Cruz skateboards, it can be a, a really elaborate illustration for, for that idea, right? But it's still shedding light on what it means to be a Santa Cruz skateboard person. So illustration is, is kind of a vague term, but really what it has come to mean now is that illustrations are meant to be reproduced. They're not one of a kind objects. And so because they're meant to be reproduced, no matter their purpose, they need to be versatile in their design. And the most versatile of all illustrations are what are called spot illustrations. Spot illustrations float on their own, apart from the format that contains them. So I think most of us are familiar with, so here we have the color illustrations for Harry Potter, and they had different cover illustrations for different editions and different cover illustrations for different uh, geographies. Like when it was first released in, in England, the cover was very different than when it was released in the United States. But it also, if you open up the book and read it, and why I use Harry Potter is because most of us have seen these books. It also has at the beginning of each chapter, a so the spot illustrations are free floating. Notice how they're not contained by a rectangle. And so you can see how, oh, if I really love that, that illustration of the three headed dog, then I could, could see it working on a t-shirt. I could see it working as a sticker. I could see it working on a poster. So this is a really versatile way to work. But what makes it a spot illustration? It doesn't have any cropped edges, right? So no one is cut off at the knees. Everything is always a thought about on every edge. That doesn't mean that it doesn't contain setting. So here you have someone running into the forest, but in order for it to still be a spot illustration, the edges of the illustration are rounded and then arced at the top to, to encase the sky and then the trees smartly uh, break out of that boundary, right? Same thing with the dragon in the sky. So if you want to show context, you don't do it with a rectangle. You do it with a, a shape that you conceive. I think a great way to think about this is sticker design. Because stickers are almost always spot illustrations. Very few, you know, arts are just rectangular right? They'll have <clears throat> an edge to them. It's called a kiss cut edge. So even though they're surrounded by this little white layer of vinyl, it's meant, meant to be a, a shape. And so when it's put on a background, that shape is free floating. So that's a good way to think of spot illustrations. Another way to think about it is tattoo design, right? 
because tattoos are designed to go on the body. The body is not a rectangular sheet of paper. Even the most complicated tattoos will contain themselves within a shape. And that shape is meant to be free floating on the body, just like a sticker. So these are what are called spot illustrations, or can be called spot illustrations. And the best ones kind of encapsulate the whole idea in them, like this light bulb that has flowers coming out of its base and the roots of the flowers become the filament of the bulb. That's a really lovely kind of self-contained spot illustration. You can see how that would work well on a t-shirt, would work well as a sticker. All right, so for our assignment, I like to usually have some sort of theme, but you aren't required to follow the theme, but you, you are required to have an idea that you're working with. So let's look at some examples. So this is where you'll post it. There is a designer out of Oregon I like named Nathan Yoder. He, he owns uh, Yonder Studio. You can follow him on Instagram. And he is a really good multi-purpose illustrator. And he shows here how doing kind of a spot illustration of a bird's head just with line art can take very different approaches from the very graphic, kind of like a logo, to something more photorealistic with stippling, to something that's more stylized with linear hatching, or something that's kind of more cartoony with a mix of kind of stippling and thick outlines. Because what we're going to do is we're going to, whatever our idea is for our spot illustration, we're going to sketch it, we're going to make line art for it using digital inking. If you have Illustrator, I'll show you how to convert that line art into a vector just for good measure so it's scalable. But if you don't have Adobe Illustrator, it's fine. I'm going to show you how to make your line work very clean using PhotoP and the, the digital tools we have available to us. And then we are going to learn how to do digital coloring, which is a big part of this project, which is coloring behind your line art. So how is digital coloring different than digital, digital painting? Digital coloring is when you color behind a real or implied outline. And we'll get into that with these slides as we're working on this project. So here are some of Nathan Yoder's kind of tattoo designs, his spot illustrations. You can see how they're fully colored. He first sketches them, then he does his line art, which he does with an ink pen. And then if he wants to vectorize them, he, he scans them in and then uses Illustrator to, to live trace them. And then he puts uh, the coloring in behind them using a program like Photoshop even though he, he tries to make it look as hand done as possible, which is why I like his work. So we're gonna do that same process. This is one by David Sasella. You can see his work on Behance. And it shows the sketch phase, which is very detailed for his work, a lot less detailed for Nathan Yoder's work. And then he very carefully does um, vector line art. You can see all the vectors there. And then he does coloring behind, sometimes as a vector color as well. And this is perfect for t-shirt design. So what I would like you to do is to think about the kind of digital artwork you really like. A lot of you like character design. This is one of those examples. And so you can kind of look at these. You can see how different creators make them. This is the kind of thing you are showing, showcasing in your midterm presentations. But then I want you to think, okay, well, how are you going to take what you're inspired by and do your own thing? So in a past semester, we had a theme of sleep. And this student chose to explore that theme through a spot illustration of a head and then the imagery of sheep kind of being counted above the head. And so they did their sketch, and then they did digital inking that they then turned into a vector, but you actually don't need to as long as you digitally ink at a high enough resolution. And then they did the raster coloring behind the digital inking. And then that's the finished spot illustration. All right.
we can see past student examples in Imgur for, with students that used this assignment as their final um, final portfolio. And so we scroll down to past student examples for assignment seven. And these are the things that are required from you for assignment seven. A sketch of a free floating spot illustration idea. You want to have it be your best idea. So do some thumbnails first and then and then work up a refined sketch of your best idea. We want to see clean line art, which I'll be showing you how to do. This is from last semester. So this is not vectorized, but it's it's using photo P to make smooth, clean lines. And I'll be showing you how to do that. Digital inking. And then this was the color version. Pretty simple color, but it adds to it. Here we have a sketch, the clean line art, and then the color version. And then they showed how it would work on a t-shirt, kind of as an extra. Sketch, line art, color behind the line art. Sketch, line art, color behind the line art. Showing how it would work on a, on a product, because we'll have that option. Sketch, line art, color on the line art, showing it on a product. Sketch. Professor? Yes. Um, uh, what do... Does this next project uh, necessitate a trackpad? No, uh, I'm going to, well, trackpad, yes. Or not trackpad, but mouse, you know, some way to interact with your screen. I'm using a trackpad because it's on my laptop. But you can do it with a mouse. You can use it with any way that you can move a cursor. Is it made easier by having a, a tablet, right? A stylus and a tablet. Yes, it is made easier doing that but it is not um, required or necessary to know how to do it. Understood. And that's going to be the same for digital painting, which we'll get into as well. My only other question then was, uh, what is our theme this semester? What is the theme? Yes. So very good. So I've been thinking about it, and I didn't want to make the theme too heavy. And this is an optional theme for those of you who, who feel like you work best when you have some concept parameters. But the theme I chose was playing cards. So the kind of illustration that might go on a playing card. That doesn't mean it has to actually be the traditional hearts, diamonds, clubs, spades, kings, queens, jacks kind of playing card image. And what I am going to do, this was my initial sketch, I wanted to do something about this kind of moment we are in coronavirus and the pandemic where we're seeing light at the end of the tunnel, but we're still, we still have a lot of anxiety. Um, I'm still hoping I can get a vaccine soon, trying to figure out the safest and, and best way to do that. And so I wanted to do this kind of bilateral symmetry that, that playing cards have, right? where it can be rotated and work either way. So I thought that might be a fun theme for, for a spot illustration. Basically that they work when reversed, when turned upside down. And so I wanted to play with the idea of being plagued by anxiety. And so this was my refined sketch. And I took my pencil sketch and I brought it into Photoshop and I, I just refined it a little bit so that I get this image, which I think works both ways. And then for our next assignment, we will have the option to add type to this or to our logo to make a poster. And so I thought it would be great to add type right in here for assignment eight. And it's going to be inspired by flash art, by tattoos, by stickers. This is the kind of thing I'm into. And then earlier in the semester, I did this drawing. And I was thinking I would use this as a demo. But because I, I am not going to be using a stylus and I'm not going to be using um, Illustrator, it's 
a little bit ambitious for what I can demonstrate. 